Hey there folks, back in Bristol for another ticket of real features. I don't know if I'm going to be doing an edition of Straight to the Heart this year for Valentine's week, but it depends how things go this week. Unprofessional on my part, I get it. But today I'm watching the Lego Batman movie and considering how awesome Batman's appearance was in the Lego movie some three years ago, then chances are this is actually going to deliver in the ways that we kind of expect. And Will Arnett, he was he's just perfect as Batman you know the little mannerisms the comedic um, cynical full guy aspects of the personality it just works so in about an hour and 40 you'll find out my exact opinion on the Lego Batman movie now time for the spoiler review um, the writing is very slick, very sh very sharp, and kind of lampshades the whole thing, uh, particularly with Ralph Fiennes' as Alfred, who I find, uh, you know, he plays a damn good Alfred. And this has this very kind of quiet, reserved um, wit about him, uh, airing, his, you know, criticisms in, in good taste. Um, you know, it's saying to to Bruce, you know, I've seen you go for these weird fa these phases, but you know, in in 2012, to 2008, 2005, 97, we'd like to forget the movie, 95, 92, 99, and that weird one from 19 from 1966 with you know the back to see portrayed by Adam West, which they actually put uh, in the movie. So I thought, you know, that was uh, that was that was really cool. And it's just how, it's almost like it's a parody. Because um, I'm guessing that was the kind of thing that they were going for, particularly when they had the Lego movie. Um, where they kind of take the Batman concept and kind of turn it on its head and sort of make it out to be a little bit attention-seeking, a little bit uh, narcissistic. It, it, it's a complete opposite of what we know and perceive the Batman character to be, you know, figure of the shadows, get in, get, you know, do the job, get out of Dodge, hide under the cape and cow, and Will Arnett nails it, you know, he, he does the, the very gruff voice very well, and he, he got, they kind of lampshade the intro to the Nolan movies, even starting the same way as particularly how Batman Begins started with this very grim and gritty, um, you know, intro. It goes, you know, gritty soundtrack, movie logo, DC, the house that Batman built. And he kind of takes a Michael Jackson quote from Man in the Mirror, but says, no, Michael Jackson didn't say that. Batman said it. Me, Batman, because I'm awesome. I go with... Zimmer, as a conversation between him and Michael Sarah's Joker, says, Batman doesn't do ships. Now, I don't know if that's the writer's kind of um, self-aware that a lot of fans like to try and ship Batman and Joker together because it's there's kind of an implied relationship with the way... Particularly, this is also kind of implied in... Uh, Dark Knight Returns, where Joker just has eyes for Batman. It's like, Batman, darling. It's just like, okay. Uh, that is something that's kind of a theme throughout the, throughout the movie is Joker exists purely for Batman to stop him and Batman needs the Joker just to exist as a vigilante crime fighter. Um, it does follow... The, the only minor critique I'm going go, to gonna highlight with the way they've written Batman is they do a very generic um, and tried and tested method where, you know, you have the protagonist who um, kind of... Notice it realizes that they're behaving a little bit irrationally and irresponsibly, taking in too much attention, pushing everybody out, and then does do the whole, you know, 
turns over a new leaf shtick and, you know, actually starts becoming a team player. Because Batman's always been this character, with the exception of the Justice League and Batman and Robin um, and Batgirl, uh, Robin and Batgirl, excuse me, he's pretty much a, a loner um, in the sense of he doesn't really want too many people around him just so that he doesn't really have a repeat of what happened to his parents when he was eight or nine years young, dependent on which continuity of Batman you followed throughout the years, because it, it varies uh, from source to source. And, you know, it's, it's a method I've seen so many times where, you know, someone who's a stark loner for the majority of their existence and their career, but then when they start letting others in, they actually start realizing, like, you know, hey, you don't have to do this alone. I was expecting uh, the Justice League to intervene, considering Batman goes to the effort to go to the Fortress of Solitude, which I noticed they put in the little score, the John, little piece of the John Williams score, where young, um, where teenage Clark Kent goes to throw the little green um, Kryptonian crystal to. Um, you know, create the forces of solitude. And it's just like these little wink, wink, nod, nod moments that, you know, us adults and, uh, you know, big kids uh, pick up on because, you know, you see the, you see and hear these little references like, I remember it's like, I remember seeing that first time, you know, when, you know, when I was a kid and it's just like, oh, I know what you're doing there. And to hear Will Arnett go, you want to get nuts? Come on, let's get nuts. And even having it as a hit mix on on his playlist for his, for his visor, I thought, all right, that's not bad. And the array of different bat vehicles. And to hear the expression, atomic batteries to power, turbines to speed, I thought, okay. I like that. And especially seeing Alfred in the 1960s uh, Batman TV uh, outfit, I thought, <laughs> okay, that's actually not bad. Uh, uh, Michael Sarah as Robin, he has this neediness about him which makes, uh, you know, this in particular interpretation of Robin a little bit more fanboyish. I get that's what they're trying to go with, but I felt like that maybe they could have dialed that back a little bit. And the whole thing where he modifies his costume to wear, um, how should I phrase this, where uh, the costume doesn't leave much to the imagination. You're thinking, oh, no, 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 don't, don't do the, uh, the, like, the really campy, questionable costume from back in the day. I was just like, okay, let's just, uh, let's just move along from here. This is, uh, this is a little awkward. Oh, dear. Uh, Rosaria Dawson as Barbara Gordon, where it's implied, implied that there's a thing between her and and Batman and by extension Bruce Wayne but they they never really go anywhere with it it's it's kind of you know they know that Batman has a thing for Barbara Gordon this but they play Barbara like you know I just want to help you out just want to be your friend so I felt like in that there was kind of a wasted opportunity uh, make of that what you will. And it's just this idea of Batman, um, you know, watching uh, romantic comedies in his own, you know, home cinema. Uh, particularly with uh, Jerry Maguire, where he's watching Tom Cruise's signature line going, saying, You had me at hello. Which, uh, I was surprised that they managed to get in, but Warner Brothers owned the rights to it. Whilst we're on the subject of that, um... I have to question how they got, I think it was the creature... 
I, I don't think it was Godzilla that was the creature from uh, from the sea, but when you see him take out uh, the the Eye of Saruman from Lord of the Rings, he's just like, ooh. And there's like all these various other characters from different properties, and I'm like, particularly when they get up into the Phantom Zone, where Joker's doing his recruitment thing, I was a bit surprised to see the T-Rex and the Velociraptors from Jurassic Park and Gremlins. I'm like, Gremlins I can understand because I think that was owned by Warner Brothers, but the dinosaurs from Jurassic Park, I'm like, I was like, did you get the okay from Universal for this? And Jaws? Alright. And the thing where I, I find just a little bit cringeworthy, maybe it's just me. Maybe I just think that there's some things that shouldn't be put in a movie from the internet, but it's when, um, when you it's when you see King Kong scaling a building in Gotham, and it says, "Come at me, Godzilla." I'm like, really, really? <laughs> oh, God. No, no, no. Um. Uh, uh, there's other bits that are kind of cringeworthy, but they make you smile. Is when they're trying to put uh, Robin's theme together, and you happen to hear Wake Me Up Before You Go Go played by Wham, which I thought. <laughs> I mean, you know, most people know I love George Michael's music, I love Wham's music. It, it's such a shame that, that the man's gone. But, you know, the idea that that would be Robin, potentially Robin's theme, is like, oh dear. Oh god. Uh, I'm also on the subject of music as well. Uh, I like that um, they kind of got Will Arnett just to sort of have fun, as if he's beatboxing um, the 1960s uh, Batman thing. He's like, da 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 and even during fight scenes, there's pow, zap, wallop, thump. I'm like, nice. And truth be told, I think people kind of miss that a little bit now. So maybe the Lego Batman franchise is a way of Warner Brothers saying to fans of the Adam West uh, version and the more campy Batman is their way of saying, you know, this is our means of appeasing you. Uh, visually, you know, Lego speaks to so many people from, um, you know, from 8 to 98. There, there, there's something quite charming about Lego that I don't think it'll ever get stale. And... Uh, I was looking through the credits, because I'm one of these people on occasions I will stay till the end just to see if there's a post credit scene. I was a bit surprised with this movie. There is none. And I can't really give you a spoiler warning for that, because this is a spoiler review. This is the purpose of having this so you can get a clearer idea of what's going on. And uh, apparently, everything I thought, um, was listed in there, which I thought, okay, I don't recall hearing that, but... All right, make of that what you will. But... <sighs> I think that's probably the most amount of fun uh, watching any particular movie, uh, especially an animated movie, about Batman, where I come out of the flick and thinking, I gotta pre-order this. I have so gotta pre-order this. Um... Uh, but yeah, just to summarize, I think everybody turned in a fantastic performance with their voc with their um, with their voiceovers, visuals. It's as stunning as ever. Uh, the humor, the humor is just sh so sharp and quick witted. Uh, the people that wrote this, they knew what they were doing. They really wanted to have this more comedic styled Batman that just lampshaded everything that we're all thinking. Um, 
so yeah, um, like I said in the uh, spoiler-free review, this gets a triple A plus must. Um, <laughs> you know, it's just one of those movies where it's going to speak to the kids of today and it's going to speak to the kids of yesteryear, particularly uh, those that grew up with whether it was the Batman TV series in the 60s or the Super Friends in the 70s. I know Helsing920 will particularly be uh, fond of that because I know he's a big fan of the Super Friends. How you doing, by the way, Helsing? Um, this will, it speaks to me particularly with references to the 1989 um, Tim Burton Batman movie because I, I'm a huge fan uh, of that of the first part of that particular movie series Batman Forever I like it it's not as good as the the first Tim Burton movie but that's just my opinion Batman and Robin I don't even acknowledge that thing's existence but the like I say the 89 Batman movie um, to me that's the ultimate Batman movie that's just where Everything's perfect, but that's my opinion. Your opinion, your opinion may differ. That's the great thing about having an opinion. We're all entitled to one. But yeah, um, if you've got um, six fifty to spare, and you're not doing anything um, on, you know, at, at, after you're done with work for the day, or you're on a day off, seriously, give this thing a look. Even if you're not a huge fan of Batman and or Lego, I guarantee you, you're going to come out of this thinking, that wasn't bad. It's like, I might not be a fan of this, but that wasn't bad. Um, and it's, it's going to be another one of those things where it's a uh, family-rated movie, but it's going to score so much on so many levels that um, for you know for a lot of people whether you grew up with Batman or Lego this is going to speak to you, your heart this is going to speak to your childhood a lot so uh, most definitely oh <laughs> before I go they actually found a good use for the they, <laughs> they kind of said oh you know oh, with the shark repel oh you know use that it's not going to be useful uses the shark repel on the shark he's like hey that thing actually does work <laughs> I'm like yeah Oh my goodness, that, that was so much fun. <laughs> you know when I'm enjoying something is when I'm able to uh, be emotional in a good way, like there, because... <sighs> yeah. Yeah. This has been MJ Knight, signing off from Real Features for the spoiler review of Lego Batman the Movie. Go watch it, it's awesome. And yeah, good night from the night.